killer. Yo, what's going on guys, it's Gamer here, back again with another video, and today we're going to be uh, reviewing Boruto episode 11, and the title of this episode is The Shadow of the Mastermind. And honestly, a lot of stuff uh, that happened in this episode uh, made me really like the episode and appreciate what actually realistically happened, because although it felt like how, uh, although it felt like the, uh, the other episodes were in the past, like towards episode 1-ish to like episode like seven ish I would I would say uh, it was similar to that but it had a lot of other like depth behind it uh, with a little a little a little interactions and stuff like that with some of the characters that it made it it made it uh, different than a normal episode than the normal episodes have been in like the last couple weeks towards uh, like month or so uh, that the episodes have been and so the beginning of the episode actually uh, begins off with the cliffhanger that happened in the last episode, and really it was it was just no big deal. You know, the ghost had just attacked the uh, one area where the, uh, where where the class representative was with her with her little um, with the other uh, two classmates, I guess. Sumide, I believe that's how how you pronounce her name. Correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, you know, she's fine. She's not really, you know, that injured whatsoever. She still uh, is in the hospital. She's going to be there for a little bit, but mostly she's okay. She's fine. She wasn't really that injured too uh, too badly, to be honest. So the whole, uh, like, uh, the cliffhanger that happened last, last week, I'm pretty sure, uh, it wasn't really that big of a deal because, ironically, I guess, one of Naruto's uh, Shadow Clones, most likely, was there uh, when it happened, so it wasn't you know, like I said, too big of a deal and stuff like that. So, you know, everyone's just pretty much making sure that, that, that you know, she's okay and nothing's, you know, wrong with her or whatever. And, you know, Shino, uh, there was a scene with Shino and he's like, I feel bad because, you know, this is my fault because I, I said all of you to go have, you know, real job experiences or whatever and stuff like that. Then Nar- uh, not Naruto, I'm sorry, Boruto walks in and he goes straight to the class representative or Sumide and he goes and he immediately starts, you know, asking if she was okay and all that shit. And then he starts actually apologizing uh, because he feels, you know, bad of what what actually happened. He feels like it's his fault because uh, because he wasn't there and because he was so reckless with the mail delivery job that he wasn't there for that reason. So he started apologizing to the class rep and, you know, he just... He just feels like guilty, I guess. He feels at fault for something that he, that really wasn't realistically his fault, even though it kind of was at the same time. Fast forward a little bit. Uh, he's in the hallway talking to Mitsuki and Shigadai, and then you know he's he's starting to explain why he feels at fault for what had happened to Sumire and all that stuff. And then uh, Naruto comes down the hallway, and then he starts talk, talking to Boruto, basically explaining to him like, "Yo, dude." You need to stay out of this crap. You should have told me when this is all happening, you know, because, you know, like, just look at this other guy over here, you know, being healed by Sakura. Sakura was in the episode, by the way. You know, he's dragging Boruto uh, by the ear down the hallway, explaining to Boruto, like, yo, you should have told me when this shit was happening, bruh, because, like, people, are, people's chakra is being sucked up by this quote-unquote ghost you know that's been happening all throughout the, the village why didn't you warn me and then uh, Shino actually walks into the room uh, with Naruto and Boruto and Chikadai Mitsuki um, and he's like yo relax like give him some credit uh, give him the benefit of the doubt because uh, you know he actually brings up the fact that you know in a couple episodes a couple weeks ago uh, back uh, Mitsuki, Shikadai, and Boruto actually beat Shino when he was being possessed by the ghost, you know, so I, I liked how the fact that he mentioned the fact that that happened, because I feel like for some reason some people might have forgotten about it, but Shino basically just explains to uh, Boruto and the other two, like, I'm not gonna treat you, I'm not gonna treat you as children anymore, because you kind of know what's already been happening, so might as well treat you as adults, I guess, I don't fucking know. But anyways, we go back to a different scene, and all three of them, Mitsuki, uh, Boruto, and Shikadai, they're all back at the po uh, postal delivery services, and they got their, um, basically are allowed to go and deliver mail 
uh, like everybody else, uh, or like how they were last week before they significantly fucked it up. And uh, I don't, I don't know how to pronounce his name. I, I, I apologize for not trying to pronounce it. I just don't like butchering people's names because I don't like the sounding correct. But basically, the guy they were with last week basically begged, like the, the basically the boss, I guess, of the postal delivery services to allow them to deliver mail again. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't really understand uh, why, but they kind of just did. But Boruto was really likable in this episode, mainly because he was apologetic when he thought he he did something uh, like bad or just something that wasn't right. And he also thanked uh, thanked the guy for uh, allowing him to you know be able to deliver mail like he was before. Fast forward uh, a little bit again, and they realized that. Uh, they have to, you know, go into a specific route so that way they can actually deliver the mail like how they're supposed to. But of course, with all these ghost incidents happening, uh, it happens just before, the, uh, uh, just before they get there. So, uh, like what happened with Sumide, uh, the class representative, in, in last week's episode, you know, it, all that happened and it ended just before Boruto. Or, or any of the three of them actually got there so obviously they know like the route that's that's basically going to be happening so they pretty much are, uh, so they pretty much are gonna set up a plan but we'll get into that a little bit we go back towards another scene another incident happened and we see Sai again and Sai is working really fucking hard and uh, Naruto is actually talking to Sai and he's like yo you don't have to work so hard uh, just because with if it revolves around like the foundation the disbanded foundation for uh, for those of you who don't know uh, it was like a big thing and uh, mostly in shipping and i would say and sai used to be a part of the foundation but uh because of naruto he he changed sai for the better and now he's i guess basically a part of the main cast for the rest of shipping i would say main cast but you know what i mean um uh, you know and sai is just really working hard uh, to you know, figure out who uh, who this guy is, uh, control uh, basically. Uh, not, I was I was gonna say manifesting the ghost, but more so manipulating the ghost. Uh, uh, we actually do see you know the guy who's manipulating the ghost and controlling people uh, with this, and we go back towards uh, the postal delivery services again. Uh, Mitsuki, Shikadai, and Boruto, they think of a plan that basically go out through this, the entire route, they basically cover the entire village, and if something happens, they, sh they, they send off a firework to let people, uh, to, to let each other know uh, if something is actually happening, and the way that they're actually covering the entire route, uh, or all the routes rather, is Shikadai actually uh, got the rest of the other classmates to basically participate or take part uh, in all this because uh, uh, Boruto was actually thinking about using Shadow Clones, but Shadow Clones didn't work because uh, Boruto Shadow Clones uh, specifically uh, can't go too far or at least outside of eyes reach. So basically if Boruto can't see, see his Shadow Clones and if Shadow Clones can't see him, they can't go very far like Naruto's would. Even even at as y as young of an age as Naruto, they were able to go much farther than that. But you know what? I guess it doesn't make Boruto that overpowered. So it's whatever, I guess. So everybody leaves. Uh, they go out and they're on. To, uh, they're out to go do like their routes and stuff like that to cover out basically just the whole leaf village and stuff like that. And we meet the guy who's been uh, manipulating uh, the ghost, like I said, and he's wearing. Uh, kind of like Anbu Black Ops uh, outfit, like uh, like how uh, specifically the medical ninja, like how they were in uh, Shippuden, and I thought that was really interesting. So maybe they do uh, must have something to do uh, uh, with the foundation, maybe just a little bit, but I have no idea because the foundation and the Anbu are, I, I guess, the same thing. They were run by Donzo, uh, and Donzo ran the foundation and, and the Anbu, I guess. I'm not really sure. I don't remember at the time, uh, at the time of this recording. Let me know in the comments if you do remember, because I I don't. I'm sorry, but um. Anyways, the guy, uh, the chief, I guess, of uh, you know the postal delivery services, he goes basically fucking a wall, being possessed by the ghost uh, and everything, and he basically just goes on starting to do like all this crazy shit with the mail inside of this building, and he's straight up full off, uh, full on fucking Conan from Shippuden, I thought, like it literally looked like the exact same animation as if it was Conan, and I thought that was really interesting how they 
you know, basically use that for uh, this person being possessed by the ghost. I thought that was, I thought that was really cool because I did, I, I did really like Conan's, you know, uh, like jutsu and how she was able to man manipulate paper specifically because then, you know, if there were a lot of paper bombs in the area where Boruto and everybody else was, they, it would have been a massacre. They probably would have all either been significantly injured or, or dead, but, you know, we're not at that point yet, so no paper bombs yet. Even though Boruto actually did throw a paper bomb at the ghost after, or before it actually disappeared. Uh, just from existence, I guess. It just disappeared from the area. It's not really that big of a deal. Um, yeah, the, the guy in the Anbu Black Ops cloak uh, escapes. Shigedai uh, actually finds him, and then uh, he doesn't confront him. He just kind of just looks at him. I don't really know how to explain it other than he just looks at him, and it's just like, hey. And then you know, the guy in the Anbu, uh, the, the Anbu uh, cloak or, or outfit and the mask, he just just leaves. And then we don't see him after that. And that's pretty much the end of the episode. Nothing else really happens after that. And that, yeah, like I said, that's pretty much the episode. This episode was honestly uh, really solid at a lot of key points when it, when it really needed to be. Um, the writing has always been really solid in like, like the past like month and a half, two months, maybe even a little bit lo uh, longer than that for these episodes. And I feel like if um, the animation, the artwork was really good most of the time, uh, that would be really, really just really good just all around for everybody. But specifically this episode and even like even last episode, the uh, art style and the animation was eh, it was eh, and just a lot of areas when uh, it just was really awkward for it to be. It's not really that big of a deal because I'm not really the type of person to, a person to go look at like animation art style. Uh, only when it, when it specifically looks bad and it's noticeably bad. But other than that, I'm just watching you know the show for the characters, the plot, you know the story, all that stuff. And honestly, I'm just waiting for uh, the uh, you know the episodes to get like into the meet and greet of just like the the plot of what's been happening throughout the beginning of the fucking uh, like the show and everything. Because it feels like nothing is happening, even though some stuff is happening in certain episodes. Even though, like I said, it feels like nothing is happening and it's just been like really filler esque, and it's kind of annoying how that. How it works like that, how it feels like that. I don't understand why it just fucking does. And I'm sorry if it sounded like I was far away. I had to move my mic a little bit so that way I can, you know, fix my fucking headset and my hair. I'm sorry. <laughs> Anyways, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap up the video. If you guys did enjoy, be sure to drop a like. And if you're brand new to the channel, please consider subscribing because you'll be able to see more videos with terrible commentary just like this and future Dragon Ball Fighters content whenever that comes out in 2018. Uh, the, the video that I uploaded yesterday that was actually Dra uh, Dragon Ball Fighters gameplay uh, with Golden Freeze and Super Saiyan 3 Goku actually got uh, plus 40 views in like 24 hours and I was I, I was extremely blown away when that happened. That really just caught me by surprise. And thank you guys for whoever did watch the video. You know, I really appreciate that. I'm almost to 90 subscribers, so really I would appreciate if you did subscribe to the channel. Uh, all, all of my social media will be in the links down below and stuff like that. And I'm going to go ahead and wrap up the video. I'm going to do my outro again. If you, guys, if you guys did enjoy the video, be sure to drop a like. If you're brand new to the channel, don't consider subscribing. I'll see you guys in the next video. Hope you guys are having a fantastic day. I'm out. Peace.